Hi, this is Chris with Sanderson Test Prep, and in this video we are taking a look at questions 5 and 6 in section 4 of practice test 1 of the SAT. So let's take a look at number 5. It says, which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association between D and T? So first of all here, our keyword is a negative association. So when you're looking at a graph, when they say association, we want to think of slope. We want to think of something that shows a negative relationship or an inverse relationship between the values that we see on these axes. And the best way to do this is to draw what we refer to as a best fit or a regression line, which basically means a line through the different data points in the scatter plot that best estimates the trend that we see. So for A, for example, we do see that it's a loose relationship, but we do have some kind of negative relationship here. If you look overall, big picture, we have a lot more high value data points for T at lower values for D, and then vice versa, we have some lower values for T further along at higher values for D, which does show a negative relationship. So we can see a potential negative relationship here. For B, we see something that looks about neutral. Maybe there's a slight positive correlation there. Maybe it's, it's flat and there's zero correlation, but definitely not a negative correlation, so we could eliminate B comfortably. C shows a very strong positive correlation. If you were to try to draw a best fit line through that data there, it would definitely have a positive slope, so we can eliminate that one as well. And then D also shows a negative relationship, kind of like A does. So A and D are both potential options here. And we want to see between those two, which one would fit as a better answer choice. So it says here in the question, which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative relationship. And although A shows a relationship, because there are data points that are a little further away, this area of the data, it's a little bit broader than for D, which is a lot closer to that best fit line, which means that it more closely adheres to that negative relationship or is a stronger negative relationship. So our answer choice here on number five would be answer choice D. Now let's take a look at number six. And for six, we're going to have a relationship here where we have to be able to do some unit conversions. So they tell us one decagram equals 10 grams and a thousand milligrams equals one gram. And let's see what we have to do with these relationships that they give us. A hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in one two decagram container? So the key with this is you always want to start with what's given and then you're going to use your unit conversions that they give you. But you're going to always start with your given. So here we're going to start with two decagrams and we're going to try to do conversions just one unit at a time so that we can keep track of everything. So here, if we have two decagrams, well, we know that one decagram is 10 grams. So how much would two decagrams be? So if you intuitively said 20, that's correct. And I just want to write out the calculation so you can see where that comes from. If we're doing conversion here, there are 10 grams in one decagram. And so you can see the units for decagrams cancel out and you're left with two times 10, which would be 20 grams. So that's going to be step one. So now we have 20 grams, that's our given. And now let's see what they're asking for. They want to know milligrams. We're looking for how many milligrams. That's what the unit in question is. So here we have to convert grams into milligrams and we're going to do something similar. Remember, we want the units to cancel out. So here, one gram down here, we want our grams to cancel when we go to multiply those, is a thousand milligrams. And if you multiply 20 times 1,000, you get 20,000 milligrams for this, which is answer choice D. So luckily for your unit conversions, the math itself usually isn't that hard numerically. The biggest challenge here is just to make sure that we're really careful 
identifying whether we are supposed to multiply or divide to end up with the correct answer. Because as you see in your answer choices, they all have a two in there with varying numbers of zeros, 0 0.002, 200, 2000, and 20,000. So if you aren't careful with how many decimal points you're dealing with and which direction those decimal points are moving as you multiply or divide these values together, it's very easy to lose track and end up with an incorrect answer choice. So that's how we would go ahead and tackle number six. Now let's move on to the rest of this multiple choice section. Mm -hmm.